What's up everyone, my name is Pi and welcome to SLR Lounge where we're here to help you be a better photographer. Now in this video, this is kind of a part two to our previous video. We have this entire smoke series. In part one, we basically showed you how to photograph or gave you 10 tips on photographing a smoke texture. In this video part two, we're gonna show you how to raw process that smoke texture to be able to drop it into any image and get a really nice clean smoke texture that you can then use to blend and make kind of a realistic smoke look. So let's show you how we would do that. Now, the whole goal of what we're gonna do to prepare a texture for later compositing is to neutralize the texture as best as possible and to send the blacks completely black and get all the junk out of the image. Because here's what happens. When we set this to screen mode, you're gonna see that on this image on the left side, it doesn't go completely transparent where the not the negative space is basically in the photograph. Whereas the one on the right, this one has been properly prepared. You can see that it all goes to complete black. So we can move and place this exactly where we want it. And then we don't have any of this background area that we would have to essentially mask out. We're gonna get a really messy mask with something like this. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna neutralize kind of the color. We're gonna fix all the black and highlight kind of toning, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do some basic painting just to get all the other detail out so it's ready to drop in and use in any image. Now, if you are using the SR Lounge Smoke Texture Pack, which is available in the SR Lounge store, this is not necessary. This is done on all 400 images, so you can drop it into any image and it's ready to go. This is only when you're shooting your own smoke textures will you need to do this when you wanna prepare them for later use in compositing. So let's go ahead and jump into the actual tutorial piece now. So we're gonna go into Lightroom. I have a file loaded up here. And uh, let's go ahead and just bring our right side develop panel back. Again, if you wanna know how to photograph this, go back to the last tutorial where we showed you the 10 tips on how to photograph smoke. But you can see that this shot was taken at 1 one sixtieth of a second at F71 and ISO 200. Let's go ahead and we're gonna get started. So the first thing is to kind of neutralize the color. So if you have any color shift, for example, if, if your smoke looks too blue or if it looks too uh, warm, I'd recommend going with a neutral color. Again, the goal is to get a very neutral image that you can drop into any image. And then at that point, you blend and you add the color necessary to basically get it to blend with that photo. If, for example, we add sharpening and we add color and we do all those stylistic things here, then your smoke isn't gonna be neutral enough to work with any image. Basically, you're gonna have issues when you start dropping them in, colors don't match, and you're gonna have to have, it will be a hard time to basically blend. So what we wanna do here is let's set up a neutral temperature. And right, actually, where it was shot was not bad. I might do a little bit of warming up. I might take the tint up just a little bit too and just maybe bring this up to about 7,300. Kelvin, maybe 7200. And this looks pretty good. So here it was, um, let's see, that's the, that's actually not the before. Here's the before. And then you can see it's just a little bit more blue and then the after is basically just a little bit more neutralized with the white, uh, the white balance. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make any adjustments if we need to exposure. Um, right here we can just make a small adjustment, but basically what I wanna do is try to make most of my adjustments with the highlights and whites. I'm gonna bring the highlights up a bit and the whites just down a little bit. Then with the clipping alert turned on, okay? So hit J to turn on the clipping alert. We're gonna drop the shadows. And mainly we wanna drop the shadows just a little bit, but I wanna drop the black significantly. Now the goal here is to get the background to be completely blue like this so that when we drop it in, there's no flex or anything anywhere. And to do that, we need to actually zoom in and check this out because from this full view right here, it's a little bit deceiving. When I zoom in, you're gonna actually see there's a lot of particles and little bits and pieces here and there, particularly if we uh, raise the blacks up just a little bit more, you'll notice that in certain areas, we're gonna see a lot of particles, and if you zoom out, you really don't see that as much. So we wanna zoom in and kinda make sure that there are no particles uh, present, okay? So we're gonna bring down the uh, blacks to probably around negative 40, maybe negative 45. We don't wanna go too low because it's gonna start to clip all the detail within inside of the smoke, and that's what we wanna avoid, basically. So right about here, it's pretty good. We have a little bit of flex here and there, but we're gonna fix that in just a moment. So we've gotten our base tones about right. The thing is that we don't wanna really go too far beyond this. I would say don't adjust your presence, don't adjust things like HSL, don't adjust detail, particularly stay away from doing sharpening on a uh, smoke texture like this. Like you might think, oh, the smoke texture looks awesome if I add some sharpening to it, get lots of detail on the image. 
When you drop one of these into a photo and you shrink it down, you size it, it's generally gonna be already too sharp and we're gonna have to do some blurring when we wanna create realistic smoke effects. If you sharpen it here, that's something that really can't be undone once you take it into another image. You're gonna add blur and it's still gonna have bits of grain, it's not gonna blend well. So don't add additional sharpening uh, to the image, okay? Leave it where it's at. All we wanna do is just do those basic base tone adjustments. Now, what we're gonna do is bring up our adjustment brush. I'm gonna go and click negative four. This is in the preset system, guys. If you don't have the preset system, not a big deal. Hit pause, you can see exactly what it's doing and you can dial it in yourselves. All it's doing is just basically sending everything to pitch black wherever I paint this. So I'm just gonna bring this over and kind of paint close to the smoke, but not over it. Okay, there, if there's certain areas like right here, I don't necessarily want that wisp in a photograph. So I'm just gonna paint that area out too. You can use this kind of technique, this brushing, just to get anything that you don't want revealed uh, gone from the image. So if you don't want a certain portion of the smoke in a particular texture, then you just paint it out at this point. At this point. Okay, I'm gonna hit O just to bring up my uh, opacity mask, or just to bring up the, yeah, the opacity mask, just so I can see where it's at and I can paint any areas out if I need to. I'm also gonna drag this just straight across the bottom like this, because what I want is that match point to basically kind of disappear towards the bottom, and let's see if it did that. Yeah, so the match point kind of disappears and fades out at the bottom. And you also notice that if I didn't do this, if I delete this, um, if we zoom into the bottom right here, you can see particles and stuff at the bottom. So by adding that layer that we just did, that uh, local adjustment layer for to blacken everything out, it, it removes that. If you want to add any areas back, just hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and just paint over those areas that you want to add back in the smoke. So sometimes I like to just go over it real quick just to make sure that everything's okay. All right, so let's compare this to where we were before. So what I'm gonna do is create a virtual copy of this just by hitting Control apostrophe or Command apostrophe if you're on a Mac. And then we're gonna reset out this image completely. So if we put these side by side right here, you can see basically our finalized texture has a more neutral color tone. We have black in all the other areas. It's, it's completely sent to black. We've kind of polished up our highlights and, and mid-tones and everything within the smoke itself. And then we paint it over the outside just to make sure that everything goes to pitch black. So if I go back to this image and I hit J, when I zoom in, I really shouldn't see any more flex, okay? Now these little bits and pieces close to the smoke, that's totally fine. That's not gonna be a, an issue at all. But I wanna make sure that outside of that area, there's nothing present. So you can see that this does take a minute or two to do on each photo. What you wanna do when you're done with it is you wanna test it out. So what I'm gonna do is just open this up inside of Photoshop, um, again, it's just making sure that your images are ready for later compositing use, okay? So here's that file that we just did. We're gonna drop it in to our image. And I'm just gonna shrink it down a little bit and then flip this to screen. And we're gonna make sure that everything's good. And yep, we have a perfect blend. So from this point, all we need to do is get down to kind of the nitty gritty and resizing and adjusting. And we're gonna cover this in tutorial four in this series, where we're gonna go through and create a realistic smoke effect over this image. You're just basically gonna paint out the masking point. We're gonna do lots of blending, do lots of cool stuff in that tutorial. That's it for this video on how to raw process a smoke texture for later use in compositing. Now, if you're interested in the SR Lounge Smoke Pack, be sure to check it out in the SR Lounge store at srlounge.com forward slash store. I feel like I've said SR Lounge way too many times. And remember that the smoke pack does come with 400 textures all in different categories. So from fog to spewing smoke to incense and match smoke and cigarette smoke and all that kind of stuff that you need for all of your smoke desires. It's ready and in one place and they've all been prepped for compositing so they're ready to drop in. In the next tutorial, we're gonna be showing you how to create a fine art look with your smoke texture. So be sure to check that out as well. We're also gonna go into how to create a realistic look. We're gonna be using this image and we're gonna actually be creating this final effect in video number four, where we have a nice realistic look to the smoke that we're adding to images. And then we're gonna do a couple other videos showing you how to make smoke brushes, showing you, well, putting it all together and so forth. So be sure to check out all those videos as well. If you like these videos, please help us out by liking them, subscribing to srlounge.com and sharing it with your friends so we can continue to do what we love to do and helping you be a better photographer. My name is Pi and I'll see you all in the next video.